الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی ان محمد و علی و صحبہ و سلم اما بعد احبت فی اللہ The question arises, who do we take knowledge from? How do I know who to listen to? What can direct me and guide me? Because we live in a time when there's great fitna, <coughs> great fitna between the youth of Ahl Sunnah, and so much, so many refutations between the students of knowledge, so many warnings against so-and-so, and so much kethra taqil waqal. And there are so many people speaking and sharing tales about this, that, and the other, and about issues that may or may not concern us. So what should we look for? What can give us direction and hope? Firstly, if we don't have the ability to study with the ulama, meaning you don't have a language, you don't speak a language and have fluency where you can benefit from ulama in either in the Arabic language or ulama in the Somali language or ulama in, the Ethio in uh, one of the Ethiopian languages like Amharic or Oromo or one of the, or uh, Urdu, or Hindi, because there's ulama from Ahl Sunnah around the world. Never think that this is something specific to the Arabs and this is not a time or a place to get into details about that. But just know that al fi ulama Ahl Sunnah, there's many ulama from Ahl Sunnah around the world. Walillah alhamd. But what I would say, is many of the major scholars that are known from Ahl Sunnah, you'll find them in Saudi Arabia. Ahabatifillah. Some of the characteristics we can look at or you should look for when you're listening and you want to listen to people. One of the first things that we have to pay attention is to know that Ahl Sunnah places great emphasis on Tawheed. And Imam Muhammad Rahimullah Ta'ala says, A'dhamma amar Allahu bihiya Tawheed. He said, and the greatest thing that Allah commanded with is Tawheed. And what is the dalil for that? What is the evidence for that? Why do we claim that? Why is not the greatest thing that we should be calling to with social issues and how to deal with homosexuality in our community, how to deal with drug problems and how to deal with these other social issues. We know that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي الْكَرِيمُ وَمَا خَلَقْتُ وَالْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْتِ I have not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. Letting us know that that is our divine purpose. That does not negate that we did, that Islam is a medicine for everything. The Quran is a cure for everything. However, it lets us know what the priority is and that those other things fall under that. They fall under Tawheed because rectifying true Tawheed, I mean true Tawheed, not just knowing the categories of Tawheed, not just knowing the evidence of Tawheed, but practicing that Tawheed is a medicine for those other social ills. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ رَسُولٍ إِنْ نِعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَاجْتَنِبُ تَعْبُودِ And we've sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone. They were commanded with worshiping Allah alone and avoiding the ta'bud, avoiding those things, those deities, those false deities, and anything worshiped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Ahl sunnah you'll hear that in the call. So if you see someone who rarely or never speaks about Tawheed or has inhiraf, has mistakes in their Tawheed, then this is something to let you know that you should beware of that individual. The second characteristic of Ahl Sunnah that we want to uh, pay attention to if we're looking, if we, we want to listen and we, want, we have questions and we want to find out 
answers from some of our students of knowledge if we don't have the ability to go to the ulama is look for the fact that Ahl Sunnah places emphasis on Iman the practice and the patience and being patient upon that path and this is illustrated and it comes from the Hadith of Jibreel it comes from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but from the Hadith of Jibreel where Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam and asked him about Islam. And then he asked him about Iman. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam said, Al Iman in Tu'mina billahi wa malaikati wa kutubi wa rasulihi wa yom al akhir wa tu'mina bi qadri khayrihi wa shar. He said that Iman or faith is to believe in Allah and the angels. And Allah's books, like the Quran, the, to the Torah, the, the Bible, the original gospel of Jesus, alayhi salatu wasalam, and, the, and the, the suhuf of Ibrahim, wa Musa, and all the divine revealed books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And his messengers, all of the messengers, and they him after salatu wasalam, believing them, even though we didn't see them, we only have limited knowledge of them from the Quran or the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We believe in them. And they were the messengers of Allah. Alayhim Afdal Salatu Wasalam. And the day of judgment, believing in the day of judgment. And believing in the divine destiny, the good of it and the evil of it. So we believe in the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has full knowledge of, of all things. He created all things. He everything falls under Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will. And the all the maratib al qadr, the levels of the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that practice, what is the delil that we have to practice what we preach? Isn't it sufficient just to memorize text? Do we need someone who just memorized text that's sufficient? No. Of course we have to practice what we preach. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns those people who don't pray. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Baqarah, Atamaruna Nasabil Birwa Tansuna and Fusukum Wentum Tatlun al Kitab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Atatmuruna nasabil bitter. Do you command the people with piety? Watansona and Fusukum and forget yourselves? And you read the book? Don't do you not think? Or do you do you not possess intellect? So Allah has given us a stern warning in all uh sort of uh in, in many surahs throughout the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes this and warns the, the believer. Qabrat maktan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that it's uh, something serious, grievous with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you don't practice what you preach. Ya yuladina amanu, O you who believe. I've forgotten the rest of the ayat, but where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us in a severe warning. Why do you say that which you not do? And that's a stern warning to practice what we preach. So look for that in those people that you listen to from Ahlul Sunnah. And those are characteristics of the Sunnah. And that they have also from the Hadith of Jibreel, the Ihsan. Or Ihsan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, In ta'budullah, when he was asked about Ihsan, or Ihsan, In ta'budullah ka'annaka turaf, in lam tukun turahu fa innahu yarak. It is to worship Allah. As if you see him, and because you cannot see him, know that he sees you. So this gives a person khashiyah, wa khushu, fearfulness. 
and humility before Allah because they know that Allah can see them even though they can't see him subhanahu wa ta'ala but they're fully aware the one who's truly aware and this is a part of tawheed being fully aware that Allah can see you then this will help you act and interact with others in a proper Islamic way with proper Islamic conduct and Dalil as Sheikh Muhammad made istidlal of Surah Al-Asr for this where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَالْعَسَرُ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمَلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصُوا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصُوا بِالصَّبْرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the time. By the time, verily, mankind is in a loss. Allah says that all mankind is a loss. And he swore by the time. And then he says, وَالْعَسَرُ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Except those who believe. So then Allah made the exception. Except those who believe. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And you need knowledge to believe. You need ilm in order to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala correctly. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمَلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And they do righteous deeds. وَتَوَصُوا بِالْحَقِّ And they call to the truth. وَتَوَصُوا بِالصَّبْرِ And they are patient. So those are the characteristics of Ahl Iman. Those are the characteristics of Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. That they gain knowledge and they believe they have iman. And part of that iman, of course, is practicing. And then they share that knowledge if they are, have the ability to do so. And they're patient upon that path. Another important characteristic of Ahl Sunnah is that they emphasize also manners. Because this is something very important of the, from the deen. And just to make it clear, because some of the people have claimed made claims, false claims, unfortunately, about one of our mashayikh, Shaykh Ibrahim Rahayli, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, saying that he makes it a condition for Salafiyya or a condition for Ahl Sunnah that a person has good and proper manners. But subhanAllah, this is, this is not true. May Allah forgive us and them, those who claim this, because the Shaykh clarifies itself in his explanation of his books. And if you've studied, alhamdulillah, I've studied with the Shaykh for years, and if you follow his lessons in his lecture, you'll see that that's not what he said, nor what he meant. SubhanAllah. So it, it's sad. It would be different if he said it, and then it was taken out of context. But he didn't say it. What he said is that that, that shows, it illustrates a naqs in iman. That no doubt iman, uh, manners is a part of our deen. Is this from... The Shaykh, or does Shaykh al Islam say that Ahl Sunnah, Arham and Nas bi Khalq, they are the most merciful? Ahl Sunnah, one of the characteristics of Ahl Sunnah is that they're most merciful to the creation. And what's much greater than that is all the verses in the Quran where Allah tells us to be righteous and have bitter, bitter walidain, and be righteous to our parents and have good manners. All throughout the Quran. And the Prophet wasallam said, so if you have problems with having good manners and thinking that's uh, a part of, not a part of the da'wah to Salafi, because it's a part of the da'wah. It doesn't mean someone's not Salafi because they don't have good manners. Someone can be Salafi and have wicked, bad manners. And this is an illustration of their weak iman. But maybe their aqidah in general is, is okay. And maybe their minhaj in general is okay. But that's not something praiseworthy and good. And this is because the Prophet والسلام, said, مَا مِنْ شَيْنْ أَثْقُلُ فِي مَيْزَانَ مُؤْمِنْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَ مِنْ حُسْنُ الْخُلْقِ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبْغِذُ الْفَحِشِ الْبِذِي The Prophet والسلام, said, there isn't a thing that, which, that weighs heavier on the scale of the believers than good manners. And verily, Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. And that lets us know the tahrim the prohibition of being wicked in your speech. So be careful, even when you're criticizing your enemy, even when you're criticizing those you disagree with, even if you're criticizing Ahl Bida, be careful with your tongue and those who you think are Ahl Bida. And in Baba Ola, when you're criticizing your brothers and sisters or you're speaking about your brothers and sisters and your brothers and sisters of Ahl Sunnah, be careful with that tongue. The Prophet ﷺ said, Mamin Shayna Thkulufi Mezana Mu'min. He said, There isn't a thing that which weighs heavier on the scale of a, a mu'min on the day of judgment than 
husnul khulq, then good manners. And verily, Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. Al-fahish al badi And that includes ghiba, namima, cursing, slander, backbiting, all of those w wicked traits. So that means those things are haram. So of course, Ahl sunnah believes iman increases with good deeds and it decreases with bad deeds. So of course that, that decreases your sin when you do haram. وَعِيَادٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ Ahlul Sunnah is just. They're just with Ahlul Sunnah as we mentioned, and they're just even when criticizing Ahlul Bid'ah. And part of another characteristic I want to mention, which is important, is also realizing that Ahlul Sunnah refutes Ahlul Bid'ah because this is a part of giving advice, defending the religion of Islam, and. One of the things you'll find, which is the opposite of Ahl Sunnah, and is a wicked trait that someone can fall into, and we must be careful, and this is from uh, the statement of Imam Abu Hatim al Razi, Rahimallah Ta'ala, he said in Shara Usul al Itaqad Ahl Sunnah, Alamat Ahl Bida al Waqi'iyya fi Ahl Athar. He said, a sign of the people of Bida, of innovation, is that they fall into criticizing or uh, speaking ill of the people of Athar, Ahla Athar, meaning Ahla Sunnah, meaning the Salafis, meaning uh, Ahla Hadith, meaning Ahla uh, As Salaf As Salih. Radiallahu ta'ala'inu majma'in. And Imam Baba Hari said, "Ida zahra laka min insan shay'un min al bid'ah, fahdruhu, fa inna al ladi akhfa anka akthar min ma azhara." Imam uh, Baba Hari, rahimahullah taala, said in his book Shara Sunnah, he said, "If it appears to you on the tongue of someone something of bid'ah, something of innovation, then beware of him." For verily, what he hides from you is more severe than what he made apparent. So this is very important. Doesn't mean we avoid someone just because they made a mistake. But it means, it let us know that to be cautious. And we need to follow up and ask our brothers if they fall into a mistake and there's bidah in it or it has muhtamal, that it, it, it can be, can, uh, could possibly be a statement of bid'ah or a questionable statement, then we should follow up and ask them for clarification if their other speech does not support and clarify that. Qala Imam ibn uh, Asakir, he said, Luhum al ulama'i masmuma. He said that the, the flesh of the scholars is poison. Meaning what? Meaning that when you backbite the people of fadl that Allah loves, ahl al -ilm, the people of knowledge, the ulama, that you're eating uh, poisonous flesh, that that is something wicked and despicable. And may Allah protect us. And as an ending, Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, Ahl sunnati wal jama'a, yet tabi'oon al kitab wa sunnah, wa yuti'oon Allah wa rasuluh. فَيَتَّبِعُونَ الْحَقِّ وَيَرْحَمُونَ الْخَلْقِ This is a beautiful statement and we'll end this last statement. Imam uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, Ahl al-Sunnati wal Jama'ah They follow the Qur'an and the Sunnah and they follow Allah, they obey Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they follow the truth and they're the most merciful to the creation. That statement alone uh, is immense if we break it down. And one thing I just want to point to is the statement where he said, "Fayet to be on al haq And they follow the haq. So we follow the haq as Imam Muqbil said, and, and the Salaf said way before the great Imam, Rahmatullah alayhi, that we follow the haq wherever it comes from. Because it's the haq. If it's the haq, 
If it's uh, someone is giving you kitab illah with sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they're giving you the proper istidlal, then of course you have to follow that. You have to submit to that. Because that's a part of you, uh, ta'atillah wa ta'at rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's a part of uh, obedience to Allah and obedience to His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the last ibarah he said, wa yarhamun al khalq, and that they're the most merciful khalq. That is the sifat of Ahl Sunnah. That is the characteristics of Ahl Sunnah. So when you see people exhibiting these characteristics, then bi'idhnillah, know that they're from the sunnah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan.